morning, wonderful people. Welcome to my channel. So we are in the final video of this series of personality tests. As you might have seen, the download is in the description box to my Google Drive of all these 25 sheets. Today we shall cover number 24 and 25, which are essentially totals of all the previous sheets. Okay, this is the summary. This is the core. This is what we have to get to. This is the idea where we have to see the base personality and from where you are working and the dominance of your planets from your astrological perspective regarding your personality. Now, each planet has its own significance. It's not just a singular thing, as in it just doesn't affect your personality. It affects your life path, your health, your everything else. Right? You covered this a lot in the previous videos. Okay, so this particular one called the subconscious pattern summary number 24 essentially totals all these 12 NLP drives right right up till number 12. These are all neuro linguistic system direction towards away from attention self others understanding chunk size little or big these we shall see in each one of these further worksheets down below. Each one of them I have detailed what it means for your easy understanding. <clears throat> so these scores are taken from all the previous worksheets as you can see in the formula box in Excel sheet. Okay. So ensure that you have all the sheets, this one and all the previous ones in the same folder. Okay. And if you need to change the formula, if you know Excel, you just have to take the totals of the second worksheet from each one, wherever this subconscious patterns is there. Go to that, those particular worksheets and link up the formulas and add them here. Okay. So let us see one by one what these mean in essence. What does each one of these mean? So the first one is first worksheet here is direction attention motivation direction towards or away from are you moving towards your goals or are you running away from pain moving towards pleasure running away from pain essentially this is what it means what's your first reaction what's your first impulse that's what it means the motivation direction what motivates you as an individual are you going towards Towards people are forward thinking, goal oriented, positive energy and drive because they want to move towards the positive things in their life. Nobody wants to move towards pain, right? Obviously. So disadvantages, they might get entangled by too many new initiative at once. Something like myself, for example, too many new initiatives at once, too many ideas at once, having difficulty controlling it and staging it in a proper direction away from people are very shy they move away from pain they want to avoid taking risks and avoid any recognition in the world they are like quiet people they are introverted more off okay now this person the test person in addition of all the total worksheets turned out to be more away from wants to avoid things right that is towards and away from planetarily speaking in terms of personality towards will be rahu Rao wants to move towards something all the time, wherever it is sitting in your house, which are zodiac sign, which are nakshatra, everything. I have covered this in the previous ones also about Rahu and Ketu. Ketu, on the other hand, wants to move everything away from detach, detach, detach. I don't want to have anything to do with this. That's Ketu. I don't know who I am in this world. I don't want to this all this noise and chaos and commotion of this external world. Withdrawal. Ketu, running away from pain. Rahu is moving towards pleasure. Attention direction, the next sheet, is where your attention is dominantly focused towards. Now, totaling all the previous sheets we have here, this individual is more of others, 81%, and less of self. So, he is less focused on the self as attention direction. Attention direction filter means essentially where your attention is going. The attention direction filter, let's read through this, is about investment of our attention with respect to self or others. Do you mostly put your attention on the needs of others above your own needs? Let's say if there's a conflict of interest, whose needs do you attend to? Who do you take care of first? 
putting first priority or second priority on self or on others. Okay. This is the self-care part. Now, astrologically speaking, this is not relating, in my opinion, to planets, but it is to first house and seventh house. First house is about yourself. Seventh house is about others. All others, including the spouse. So, who do you put attention to? This particular individual is putting more attention to others. Seventh house, spouse, relationships with others. All relationships with others, you versus others. You're paying very let, less attention on self. So this is something that this individual needs to focus on. Maybe there are no planets in the first house. Maybe first house planets are sitting in the eighth house. Things like that. The self is not being paid attention to. Self-care is very important here. The idea is to bring, know this, is to bring the balance, right? You need to be balanced in both ways. Ideally, we would have 50-50%. And that's fine. Next one, understanding chunk size. What do you mean by chunk size? Chunk in this context means information. What level of information is your brain able to process and handle? That is the chunk size. Do you prefer big picture or do you prefer sorting out the details? Do you go to the little things or the big things? Overview or details? The big people... In this case, this individual totally comes to 37 from all the previous worksheets. He's having 37% of big and little 63%. Meaning the individual tends to focus on all the detailed steps and pieces that you need to accomplish the goals. Very detail-oriented people. Right? Professions where little can be useful is bookkeeping, quality control, engineering, software proofreading, assembly line, factory work, that kind of a thing, clerical and administrative positions, because they are interested in details, they are needed. 63% is little. And big people are able to plan better. They see the overview. Where do we go six months from now, five years from now, ten years from now? They often find details overwhelming. They say, nah, I don't want to see the little details drilled down to every little thing. I want to see the big picture. The big picture people are Jupiter. The little people are Mercury. It's the classic student and teacher approach, isn't it? The teacher can see the student as having very little perspective. The, teach the student, on the other hand, learns all the details from the big picture person and tries to integrate it. This is the student-teacher relationship. Jupiter always sees the big picture. Mercury always sees the little person. So see where your chart Mercury is sitting for this person. Very dominant here. Right? Next one will be reference. In your frame of reference. Internal frame of reference. Where I, Where is your consciousness going from referring to things? Are you more of an internal person or external person? This is something similar to attention direction, although not quite similar. What was the attention direction saying? Self or away from. This is where your motivation direction is. Reference is where you refer to, to go to place to get things, your ideas. Where do you make decisions from? Based on other people's judgments, feelings or opinions or your own judgment, feelings and opinions within comes from inside you. It's like the authority. Who is your authority? Internal or external? I've covered this in other podcasts as well. <clears throat> Very important to know where your influence is coming from. The internal can stay motivated where there's little feedback or praise. Why? Because they're taking all their... Self-judgment, self-knowledge, self-understanding, self-intuition from inside themselves. They are not relying on an external source of evidence. See there? They can totally disregard all external facts, evidence and advice because they have a very strong internal presence. Okay? In this case, this person is more external and less of internal, although it's quite balanced, 45 and 55%. The external person will make only facts, evidence, maybe based on external source. If there is a God, show me the evidence. These are those kind of people. They are always looking for evidence to sustain their sense of reality. 
Okay? There's nothing like an absolute reality. It's just relative. And these kind of tests really show you that everybody has all pictures involved in them. Nobody has zero percentage of anything, if you noticed. They will get stressed from lack of external feedback. This person, since the external guy is relying a lot on feedback, anything that the person says can a friend or a spouse or a relationship or a colleague or a boss, anybody says anything to them, they take it quite personally. Okay? Astrologically speaking now, for this one, I felt that the internal person is more fourth house. It's the most internal area of your chart. Natal, Navamsha, everything. Fourth is the internal place. It's the most private place in your chart is the fourth house, the deepest house, the most buried, the most private, the most secretive. External, just the opposite. Your presence in the external world. Everything governed by Saturn, your karma, your work, whatever action you take in the world is seen by everyone. In 10th house, you are seen by everyone, affected by everything that goes on in the 10th house and the planets thereof. There are more planets in the 10th house, a lot of your personality is getting affected by the external world. Yes? Next one, action. What is your action direction? Are you a proactive person or are you reactive? Now, totaling all the previous sheets, this person is more reactive. Again, it ties in closely to this. If you have everything you are taking from the external world is getting affecting you, then you are more of a reactive person than a proactive person. This is simple. I don't have to explain proactive and reactive. Proactive tends to do without thinking or analyzing, just go ahead based on my own internal reference, the reference factor we took, based on my internal judgment. So that planetarily speaking, this will amount to more of Mars. And reactive person is more in the emotions, the mind, your thought process, your subconscious mind, conscious mind as well, but more relating to emotional content thereof. Okay? So if your Mars is dominant, you'll be a very proactive person. If your Moon is dominant, you'll be a reactive person. You're getting affected by everything and absorbing it into your emotional body. This person needs to really take care. Because the emotional body is taking a huge hit if you're reacting to everything. There is less of creativity, you might say, because there is no proactivity. Creation requires a lot of proactivity rather than reactivity. Next one, operational style. What's your operational style? We covered this before. This is the summary of all the previous worksheets, wherever it is appearing in the second sheet, in whichever workbook. So the summary here says, this person is more of a procedures person rather than an options person. 52 and 48, almost balanced. So there's nothing much to worry there. So options person will look for more Rahu and Mars in their chart is very active if there's more options. I'm always looking for more options. Tell me what's the menu I can pick from. That's the option person's quote. Procedures on the other hand says, how? give me the details. I need to know more details to see how this is going to get accomplished. Don't tell me the overview, tell me the details. Okay, that's their operational style, how you operate in this world. Views, general or specific, this is again evident, I covered this, this is the totals, it comes up to specific more of, for this person, general is only about 29%. So specific means the Rahu wants to get specific, Rahu has got extreme amount of focus, Ketu has extreme amount of unfocus in a chart, whichever divisional chart you are talking about or natal. So Rahu gets very focused on what he wants to achieve. The most focused energy in the chart is Mars and Rahu. These people have focus. Tell me what I want to achieve. Where am I going with this? That's the first impulse. Ketu on the other hand says, nah, I don't want to do anything with this. Okay, okay, fine. Whatever attitude, right? Okay, whatever. Work preferences. How do you prefer to work? This is the totals coming from all the previous worksheets, second sheets. 
This person is more of proximity as you can see. He is 53% proximity. So this person typically does not like to hang around too much alone or too much with others as well. Together is very less, least amount. So this person really prefers to work alone or slightly in the company of others. They can hang around in the other room, in the other cubicles. Don't hang around me. They are not team players essentially, this person. A description is here and it's there in the previous worksheet. I won't go too much into that without saying Mars and Mercury, sorry, Venus and Mercury are together people. They always have a sideways glance. They always want to see what's going on in the neighbor's cubicle, in the office. What's going on in your life? What are you doing? What are you up to? That's Mercury and Venus combined. Rahu and Ketu, on the other hand, Rahu wants to be together. He wants to be among people. He wants to go out there and achieve stuff. He's an out outward going energy. Ketu, on the other hand, is a soloist. He's an empath. He wants to shy away from everything. The world can go to high hell. I don't care. I want to stay alone, solo. The work from home creature. Experience. This is again totals from previous. Association and dissociation. Briefly, association, this is a very powerful one by the way. Association is where you feel enjoined with your experience. Whatever that experience might be, feeling a thought, emotion, body level, you are really with that experience. Dissociation is feeling it in a detached way, as if somebody else is playing. Even if it's happen, happening something physically to your body, you will be looking at it and saying, ah, okay, my knee somewhere there is paining. It's a very dissociated form of perception and interacting with your reality. Okay, I've covered this in the previous worksheets, no need to go into details. This person is more of association. Mercury is very strong as association. Mercury wants to associate with people, with things. He wants to participate, the young prince. Jupiter, on the other hand, is the guru. He wants to dissociate. He is just disengaged from the world and looking at it from a conceptual point of view, only from the knowledge perspective. What gives this thing life? Jupiter is life. The Jiva Karaka in astrology. Next one, approach. Matching and mismatching. Covered before. What is your approach? Whenever new things are suggested, are you try to find ways to match the other person's opinion or mismatch with that and now say, no, this is not the way things. I see it some other way. What's your first impulse? These are all about first impulses because they guide the unconscious. They come from the unconscious. They are not driven by the conscious mind at all. Conscious mind just responds to something, an impulse, a drive which is coming from the subconscious mind. Mismatching is Rahu. Rahu always wants to go away from the stream. He wants to say, no, but what about that? No, but what about this? You haven't considered this or that. He always tries to mismatch whatever is being suggested. Saturn, on the other hand, is always trying to match. He always wants to go with the flow. He wants to go with the masses, with the tasks, procedures, discipline. That is Saturn. Time experience, totaling the, all the previous sheets, this person is more of an in-time person, 70-30. So he's very dominant. The perception of his experience comes more as if time is passing through his body from back to front. That's how he perceives time. This person perceives time as going from left to right in front of him like a chart. Okay. Astrologically speaking, it will be more of a 1-7 axis or a 4-10 axis of your natal chart. That's the way I come across this. The 1-7 axis, let's say if Rahu Ketu is dominant in your 1-7 axis, you will perceive everything as physically moving through you from back to front. Time is moving, your past is at your back, your future is in the front and present is where you are in the body. That's in time. Through time says, Time is in front of me like a chart, going, moving from left, going towards right. So what is dominant axis? One seven axis, there's the first house, seventh house, or fourth house, tenth house. That's what it shows. Last, 
इंटरेस्ट प्राइमरी इंटरेस्ट मोटिवेशन आई एम कवर्ड दिस इन टर्म्स ऑफ डेटिंग आई एम कवर्ड दिस इन टर्म्स ऑफ जनरल बोथ ऑफ देम ऑल ऑफ देम टोटल विल अपीयर हियर सो द पीपल काइंड ऑफ इंडिविजुअल्स हैव मोर डोमिनेंस ऑफ जुपिटर मून एंड सन ऑल दीज थ्री हैव टू डू विथ पीपल activity has to do with more mars and venus put together i mean we are collecting this okay you see all these three together in a chart you see these two guys venus and mars together this person is dominantly activity oriented they want to do stuff think oriented people want stuff want material objects they want fancy cars they want gadgetries they are even translating people to things they even view intimacy as just sex objects you see what i'm saying they are more interested in thing part of it rather than feeling part of it feeling part of it has to jump to people because there is moon there the jupiter there there is sun there all sattvic planets the place kind of people curiously is mercury and we have seen this in the primary interest motivation on two worksheets this is very important for people to know whom they are dating and whom they are related to and how they function in this world now let us briefly see the totals of summary of planets so the summary of planets this 25th worksheet essentially summarizes the planetary energies from all the other previous pie charts like you can see right from the worksheet learning style subconscious learning style personal learning style natural thinking style temperament test advanced thinking style multiple intelligence style inclination employee and so on so forth right up till the values of your subconscious pattern summary see there everything it totals in terms of your planetary arrangement except for the first house seventh house all the scores are totaled here whatever score is appearing against sun and venus in this chart for example is coming as the total here see there whatever is coming as jupiter moon on the pie chart this is just an indication on the pie chart there is no other score there but i am taking the scores from that respective column and totaling it over here okay so how you have to work this is there are totally nine we talk of in vedic astrology system so nine planets right right from sun moon mars mercury venus rahu ketu and moon jupiter so those totals are put here the way this works is this column you see right there which is called tally now what you got to do manually is check the score in each one let's say in this one learning style test just take test by test don't go by the whole thing it will be too misleading take just the learning style test as i have highlighted here and just mark yes and yes if it's equal in this case being 16 to the highest score in each just take the highest if it is singular singular value for example the next one subconscious learning style test the highest is 28 which is jupiter and moon just say yes there and the totals here will get changed this formula it work let's say in the next one personal learning style test it is 40 score here which is highest among the three manually do it okay so if just see the highest and mark a yes against it in everything natural learning style test which is the highest among this seven which is moon jupiter and ketu temperament style test which is the highest among these values 50 so saturn ketu mercury so very high value there among these the advanced thinking style test you have to go individually now okay because there are different worksheets in each that's why i have differentiated over here by colors so first take this among this four is the highest then next four because these are in green okay i have put yes yes because there is a similar score then next one among these two which is the highest this one among these two which is the highest that one among these two which is the highest that one 
Okay, then multiple integers is again straightforward. 35 is the highest in this column. Okay, and you keep going on that way right up till the last. And what it will give you is finally the planetary total scores. How did you score on this? Since we have basically nine planets in Vedic astrology system, it essentially boils down to you should be ideally scoring 11 on each of the planets to have a well-balanced chart. Lesser than 5 is a very weak planet in your chart. Now, I'm not talking about Shadbala system. Shadbala is the sixth planetary strength of Vedic astrology. This is not a mathematical calculation based on Vedic astrology system. This is based primarily on your input from psychological tests. You see what I'm saying? I'm coming from a different place here. I'm saying based on my understanding of planets and how they work and what energies they carry and how you answered those psychological questions in all the previous 20 sheets, that planet is working very strongly in your chart. Simple. This is nothing to do with Shadwell system of Vedic astrology. Now in this case, this person is a dominant Mercury and Saturn, as you can see in the pie chart. Saturn and Mercury, highest, 16%, which is 12 on a score. Here I have marked in percentages. Nothing is less than 5, so it's okay. If it's less than 5, the planet is kind of weak, isn't it? If it has to have a score of 11, ideally speaking, because then it will total to 99, all of them put together 11% each, nine, 11 point something percent, that would be ideal. Mercury and Saturn are very well balanced. We don't have to worry about that. The only less percentage, so to speak, approaching 5 is Jupiter. This person needs to focus more on understanding the wisdom, the larger picture of things, Jupiter, which he stands for. That's where this person will come from. Everything else is pretty much balanced. Next thing he needs to focus on is drive Mars. Sun, recognition, Venus and Rahu, sort of okay, sort of well balanced personality overall, this test individual. Right, so I will leave you with this. In the next series, I shall start covering now the nakshatras, but in terms of the Myers-Briggs model and the Enneagram model and how all these things are related together. So if you know your Enneagram type, if you know your MBTI type, this will be very interesting series indeed. I'll make one on each nakshatra so that it helps you understand the nakshatras and astrology itself from a personality driven perspective. Unless you know the personality, you don't know what vehicle you're driving, yes? So we are trying to understand the vehicle first then go on to other things. Take care, be safe.